We are in the golden age of science. How can we not be? There is more funding than ever. There are more scientists than ever. We have better education institutions, and our technologies, they are so much more complex and insightful than ever before in the history of science. So then, why the discontent? Why the, um, the unfulfillment in science? I am a PhD student, and so knowing that, you're likely to laugh me off. Um, she is in a, uh, she's disillusioned, or she's going through a phase. Um, maybe it's just a rite of passage. But I say this from observation. As a scientist, I look at the facts. I look at the people that I meet. I look at the academics and the researchers and social media, and I hear the voices screaming, more time and less returns, more publications and less satisfaction. So, today I present to you a case, a case for following the science, a case for the pursuit of curiosity, a case for um, the bringing back and reproducing the, the best parts of a bygone era of discovery. Um, a famous scientist, you may have heard of him, Al Albert Einstein, he um, said, I have no special talent. I am only passionately curious. And so, that passion, that curiosity led him to discovering the uh, theory of general relativity. The theory of general relativity, it was one of the biggest leaps in classical physics in the last century. And, his, and he just simply listened to the math. He looked at the physics, and together they told him of things beyond his time, long before they were ever um, experimentally verifiable. Today, we thank his theory of rel uh, this, this exercise in um, theoretical physics for GPS. Um, GPS is used in mobile navigation, it's used in weather tracking, it's used in satellite positioning. Without Einstein's foray into the depths of relativity, we wouldn't have, um, the world as we know it today would be completely different. And all simply because he was passionately curious. Far too much of our research and our funding opportunities today are goal specific. The outcome is clear. There is one thing to achieve, and on that basis only can you uh, uh, wrench or um, prize the funding out of their hands. But how, how can we presume to know where, the, where best to invest, where the evidence is going to lead us before it comes in? Science is inherently unintuitive. If it were intuitive, we would, it would be common sense. Instead, we, we need to look at the, the element, and we need to include that element of freedom and creativity to lead us to uncover things we didn't know to look for. So you don't ask questions about things you know the answer to. You ask questions because you need yet to find the answer. And so, similarly, science is the same. But we do not tell them how to think. Instead, we need to give them the tools to understand more, uh, to understand how to answer questions that we didn't even think to ask. That is what makes science so personal to each and every one of us. And that is what makes intrinsic motivation so important. So let's look at another example. In 2012, there was a, um, a, sci a biochemist by the name of um, Jennifer Doudna. She published, she and her group published a paper about, um, it titled, A Programmable Dual RNA, um, D, uh, Dual RNA Guided DNA um, Endonuclease in Adaptive Bacterial Immunity. It sounds like a paper that is very niche in biology, but within that she explains the beginnings of a gene editing revolution the CRISPR-Cas9 system. For those of you in the audience that may not know what CRISPR-Cas9 is, it is a programmable 
cut and paste method of um, editing the very DNA that makes up and codes for our life, co codes for every species. And so all of that stemmed from a research, a, a place in research that you would not have thought to uh, produce what it did, the CRISPR-Cas9 system. Um, no one in their wildest dreams would have imagined that the tools to edit our genome would be found in nature. And so, similarly, how do we know where to focus our money? Trying to predict the most lucrative outcome, uh, the most lucrative question to research is an option, but it does not need to be our default mentality. We need to move away from that mentality, or we risk losing the, the essence of our curiosity-led research. In order to do so, we need to think about where our curiosity lies. Thank you.